Who drops out of school these days? This is in post-war times. You're a disgrace to our family legacy. Don't act like you belong as my son's wife. I was invited with my husband to my sister-in-law's wedding, but mother-in-law, with her academic elitism, looked down on me, a dropout, as if I were less than human, and remarked those hurtful words, You don't belong here. Just leave. Mother-in-law forcefully removed the corsage from my chest and stepped on it. I understand. Little did she know. Her words would lead to a major incident in the family later on. I'm a 28-year-old married woman. My husband and I both work. I had my reasons and dropped out in ninth grade. Although my resume states dropout, life led me to work at an international company. Through mutual acquaintances at work, I met my husband, and we married. Every member of my husband's family is well-educated due to mother-in-law's academic elitism. Yet, neither my husband nor sister-in-law ever boasted about their education, nor did they judge others by it. They truly care for me, and we all get along perfectly. The only hitch, mother-in-law, and I don't see eye to eye. Our fundamental values differ, and I doubt we will ever truly understand each other. Still, I'm deeply in love with my husband and want to spend my life with him. For that, I have tried to manage my relationship with mother-in-law without conflict, but mother-in-law, she's different. If she dislikes someone, she can't just ignore them. She goes out of her way to make them feel small. Once, when invited to a family dinner, I found a different meal prepared just for me. This meal is perfectly fine for a dropout like you, she said. I have never heard of anyone dropping out these days. Maybe you're from an era when women were told they need education. Only a bowl of green bean soup and a scoop of mashed potatoes were in front of me. You should be grateful you even have mashed potatoes, my husband interjected. Quite the surprise. You have prepared, I'm guessing, to disappoint my wife first and then surprise her later. He was aware of mother-in-law's ill intentions towards me. He had reassured me before we left home. I'll protect you no matter what. Sister-in-law entered a bit late. I'm sorry I'm late, she said cheerfully. She began to lay out the dishes she had brought. I found some delicious delicacies. They cost $11,000 per arm. I wanted to share them with sister-in-law. Oh, and of course, you too, Mom. I realized what my husband meant when he said he would protect me. Unable to enjoy, my distressed mother-in-law looked visibly bored, but she wasn't the type to give up easily. Speaking of which, my nephew got into Montori Schools of America. I wonder if you, a dropout, can understand the excellence of such an institution. Having a mother like you must make one worry about their child's future prospects, she went on about how this preschool had a program leading up to college. Partnerships with renowned international schools produced famous scholars, politicians, etc. She rambled as if she had memorized a script, and then, looking satisfied, she asked, So what do you think? She knew I wouldn't be familiar with these institutions in my own country, and she intentionally asked to see me falter. People used to say that dropping out was a national disgrace. My father-in-law is a quiet man, and says nothing even when my mother-in-law spouts such harsh words. Well, he can't. My sister-in-law ignores my mother-in-law's bragging and speaks at her own pace. From time to time, she tells me, this is really good, and looks to me for agreement. In reality, I tune out most of what mother-in-law is saying. My husband keeps offering mother-in-law wine, seemingly trying to get her tipsy and out of the way. Sister-in-law whispers in my ear, sorry, just bear with it a little longer. Visiting their house always drains me but I don't want to worry my husband or sister-in-law, so I pretend I'm just dancing. I guess I am just slow to catch on. Mother-in-law is strong-willed and always convinced she's right. Both my husband and sister-in-law know that openly opposing her is counterproductive. The only options are to bear with it or tune her out. However, I'm not sure how much longer I can endure her blatant remarks, especially since her harassment isn't limited to visits. She shows up at our home unannounced. Here's my son's favorite. She would say, it's not for someone like you who dropped out. She brings gifts but never includes anything for me. She wants to declare she only drinks a specific brand of tea and had me go out to buy it. When I returned, she had left. It's manageable when my husband is home, but when she knows he's not around, I'm trapped. She'll spend hours lecturing me about the contributions of the well-educated and how the less educated devalue ours. 
I never tell my husband what happens when he's away. I don't want to worry him more than I already have. Then one day, my sister-in-law's marriage gets arranged. A polite invitation arrives announcing her marriage to a longtime boyfriend. My sister-in-law and I have a great relationship, and she thinks of me as a sister. We often go shopping and eat out together. She's precious to me just like a real sister. So, I happily accepted the invitation. On the day of the wedding, I arrived at the venue before my husband because I had an appointment for a hairdo. My mother-in-law was there as well. To my surprise, mother spots me and approaches with a furious look. I brace myself, expecting criticism about my outfit or makeup, and greet her calmly. But she loudly exclaims, Why is a disgrace like you even here? The whole venue could hear even at a religious occasion. She shows her academic elitism with so many guests present. She seems intent on making an issue out of my educational background. Our family is full of well-educated people. Only you dropped out. How dare you sit with our family? My daughter even said she regretted calling you her sister. She only wanted your brother here and hoped you would be turned away. She continued, Please get rid of that taggy crow. Then she ripped the crow from my chest and stomped on it. But it was something my husband had chosen and bought for me. I was so shocked that I turned my back on my mother-in-law and stormed out of the venue. I ran as fast as I could until my heels almost came off and finally stopped. I sat on a nearby bench, looking at the message history and pictures I took with my sister-in-law, trying to calm down. There was no deceit in my sister-in-law's words. I'm ashamed I believed my mother-in-law, even for a second. I decided to change my attitude and went back to the venue to celebrate my sister-in-law's happy day. But then, how dare you come back with that dropout face, or do you not understand the meaning of dropouts should leave? There's no place for dropouts here. My mother-in-law kicked the chair where my name was written in the bride's family section. Everyone was tense because of her behavior, especially since most of the guests had already arrived. I didn't let it bother me and sat in the guest section. On my brother-in-law's site, unbelievable, have you lost your mind? Well, maybe it's too much to ask a dropout to understand social norms. And I miss the mocking laughter of my pale face. Brother-in-law rushed in. She's the president of a business partner we have. We have a very good relationship and I invited her, he shouted. Actually, I was considering pursuing education until the very last grade. But it was only because my parents hoped I would at least graduate high school. In this day and age, it wasn't what I wanted. Why would someone without dreams or hopes go to high school? What if I took away someone else's chance by getting in? While I was struggling with these thoughts, a teacher who cared about me suggested I see the world. With their help, I prepared to leave the U.S., and they supported me throughout. In the U.S., just taking a year off can label you as a failure in life, but I learned that's not the case in the wider world. You can study whenever you want. Going to school isn't the only way to learn. I realized that languages aren't just learned. They're acquired by learning as needed. I found joy in living and working. I appreciated cultures that didn't discriminate based on education or nationality. I returned to the U.S. once as an adult, as my parents wished, but left again soon after. I started traveling between the U.S. and other countries as I found my passion. I established a U.S. subsidiary of a foreign company. That was five years ago, when I was 23. My company and my sister-in-law's husband's company were important business partners. We were both surprised when we were introduced by my sister-in-law regarding the wedding invitation. There was a debate about whether to invite me as a family member of the bride or as a business partner of the groom. My brother-in-law didn't know about the feud between me and my mother-in-law, but my sister-in-law did. She was sure her mother would assert herself even at her own wedding. I agreed, so we decided on an unusual approach of inviting me from both sides. If I could sit with the bride's family, great. If not, I was ready to fight. That was the mindset I had going into the wedding. My sister-in-law felt the same. We both wanted to make our mother regret her academic elitism. It was a plan we had together, and it worked out just as we hoped. My brother-in-law was panicking, asking, Are you trying to ruin my business? His relatives and business associates gathered around, wondering what was going on. It seems my mother-in-law doesn't like me. If I'm a bother, I'll cut ties right now. I finally got it. Then please break up with my son immediately, understood. If my husband wishes, I'll comply. But remember, if I cut all ties, 
That includes the business relationship with your daughter's future husband. My mother-in-law looked unfazed by it all. She seemed to think she had no connection to the wife of a CEO. But my brother-in-law and his family were visibly upset. Some bowed deeply, apologizing to me and urging me to reconsider, while others confronted my mother-in-law, demanding she take responsibility. Hearing the commotion, my sister-in-law arrived and was furious when she learned what had happened. I was fed up with her academic elitism, but I didn't realize she was so clueless about how businesses work. No matter how well-educated, if you can't use that knowledge, you're just societal trash, she explained to everyone the implication of losing major business partners. My brother-in-law vented, Do you want to ruin the lives of hundreds of employees? Are you the Grim Reaper? My sister-in-law added, Your presence ruins any happiness. Leave and never show your face again. I no longer consider you my mother. My husband added, I have no intention of leaving my wife. If anyone's cutting ties, it's me with you, mom. He said, She's not a part of this. Score her out. And so my mother-in-law was thrown out of the venue. Despite the drama, my sister-in-law's wedding and reception went smoothly. It was an unusual warm-up act, but the ceremony was wonderful, and everyone felt the joy. The newlyweds postponed their honeymoon due to work commitments, but they didn't delay addressing the issue with my mother-in-law. Through a lawyer, they formally severed ties. She was also sued by my brother-in-law's family, who saw her as a threat after her reckless behavior. My husband and I also put our decision to cut ties in writing, adding conditions like not approaching or speaking to us, which our lawyer communicated. Our business relationship with my brother-in-law's company remained strong. My mother-in-law, hearing about this, tried to mend fences with the newlyweds and began stalking them. She even showed up at their workplace, where security had to escort her out. Eventually, the police were called. Meanwhile, my father-in-law, who had been quiet, was making moves. Satisfied with seeing his daughter's wedding, he was preparing for a divorce. When my mother-in-law came home for the first time in a while, he told her he was getting divorced, gave her some money, and kicked her out. He had tolerated my mother-in-law's behavior, hoping for a change. But seeing his children fed up, he realized he was truly done with her. Giving her some money and sending her away was his final act of kindness. But she quickly squandered it. She might have boasted about being well-educated, but she had no idea how much it cost for a woman to live alone. By the time she realized she was left with little and now reportedly lives alone in a run-down public housing unit, Sometime later, my sister-in-law and I both became pregnant. We moved closer to each other, drawn by the community and welfare benefits. Our family has grown closer than ever. We want our children to grow up freely and not become discriminatory adults. We have many hopes. But ultimately, we just want them to be healthy. That's where our story settles for now. From time to time, my father-in-law visits to check on us. Since the family structure changed, every day feels perfect and filled with happiness.